we humans find things covered in hair more cute. We're more attracted to things covered in hair. And that's why I'm a furry. Hey, James! Hey! Furby? Everyone's gonna put on $2,000 animal costumes and... walk around. Do you wanna come? No. But don't let me stop you from this hobby of yours. I may not understand why you like it, but as long as you're not harassing or hurting anyone, or anything, then do whatever makes you happy. Also, shower regularly and eat your vegetables. So, in the last video, I made a haha <laughs> joke about being a furry. I said, given the choice between an animal with fur and one without fur, that most people would think the animal covered in fur would be cuter. And, ha ha ha, if we applied that logic to people, then everyone would be a furry. I got a mixed bag of responses to that joke. Okay, I was looking at all the comments about James saying he's a furry, and in my opinion, it shouldn't matter. If James is a furry and he told you, that means he trusts you and thinks that you would accept him the way he is. I don't care, I'm not watching him anymore. Well, that's really nice of you, Mr. Branch. But I still don't trust you. A lot of people were confused, so for the remainder of this video, every time I make a joke, it will be followed by this message. <coughs> Two muffins are in an oven. One says, Boy, it's hot in here. And the other says, Yeah, you live in Arizona, what'd you expect? But I'd say, for the most part, you guys were very accepting. So that's good to know if I ever do want to come out... as something. But if we wanted to talk about someone who is a furry, then look no further than 600 BC. You have to look pretty far. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this man named Aesop. 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 Aesuabwe. This man was the world's first furry. Okay, I'm calling him a furry because he wrote a lot of fables with talking animals in them, so I'm making fun of him for writing a lot of furry fanfiction. I'm making fun of a dead person. I made a video about a year and a half ago reading some of Aesop's fables, and that video is what this official Odd Ones Out shirt is referencing. Fables are short stories, usually with talking animals that have a moral at the end. Characters in fables don't have names. They're just simple, cookie-cutter characters. You don't have a fable with Michelangelo and Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. No, you have a fable with the tortoise, and the other tortoise. So I'm gonna read some more of Aesop's fables, but I'll be focusing on just one character, the fox. The fox gets around. You could pick any animal, and a fable exists with that animal being taken advantage of by a fox. The fox and the triceratops. That fable probably exists. With the amount of fables the fox has been in, you'd expect him to be more moral than Gandhi. Aesop really liked foxes. His persona was probably a fox. The fox and the goat. So once there was this fox eating some cheese, he wasn't looking where he was going, and he fell down a well. The fox had no way of getting out. Then a goat just so happened to be walking by and said, Hey, what are you doing down there, you silly goose? Actually, <laughs> I'm a fox, said the fox. I was just drinking some of this lovely water. Is it good? Oh, it's only the best water in the entire universe. So the goat decided to jump down and join the fox. But then the fox used the goat. He used her as a stepping stool to get out of the well. The website I'm reading this from has an interactive picture that shows the events that happened. Let's watch. So then the goat says, Whoa, buckaroo, aren't you gonna help me out? No. Instead, I'm gonna teach you a moral. If you had as much sense as you have beard, you would have been more cautious about finding a way to get out again before you jumped in. Look before you leap, you stupid idiot. Okay, goodbye. But Fox, you fell into the well too. You were the one not looking. The goat looked, you just lied to her. And you got away with it. So the real moral of the story is, you can abuse the people in your life with no consequences, as long as they end up dead in a well. The Fox and the Crab. This fable is pretty short. Once there was a crab who was tired of living next to sand, so he decided to move to a meadow. And then a fox ate him. That's the real fable! It counted as one of Aesop's 665. And the moral is, be content with your lot. Don't move, don't travel, don't try and live in a better location because a fox might eat you! Just live in your studio apartment and deal with it! The lion, the bear, and the fox. This baby goat, he's a kid, went up to a lion and a bear and said, Have you seen my mom? I haven't seen her in a couple of weeks. She said she was gonna get some water and a pack of smokes, and she hasn't come home. But the bear and the lion didn't care. They started fighting each other over who would get to eat the baby goat. And then a fox jumped out of the bushes, killed the kid, and ran off with it. I wonder how much Aesop got paid for these. Again, the website has a very nifty interactive picture that shows you exactly what occurred.
And the moral of the story? Those who have all the toil do not always get the profit. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Seems to me the moral should be, don't talk to lions and bears and watch out for foxes. The fox and the grapes. Basically what happens in this fable was that once there were some grapes growing on a really tall tree, do grapes grow on really tall trees? Maybe they did in 600 BC. And the fox really wanted some of the grapes. Do foxes like grapes? Maybe they did in 600 BC. And so he tried to get them himself, but he couldn't reach them. And since the fox didn't want to ask for help, probably because all the other animals hated him, he said, eh, I didn't want your sour grapes anyway. There are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach. Which is where I think the phrase money is the root of all evil came from. People were upset that they couldn't get money, so they just said, eh, I didn't want your evil money anyway. Okay, here's the last fable. This one's kinda sad. The fox and the scorpion. So the fox this whole time had been gathering ingredients to make the perfect sandwich. He got the meat from an orphaned goat, a sauteed depressed crab, and some cheese. He was also gonna get a side of grapes, but he decided to go without them. When all of a sudden a scorpion comes up to him and said, hey, can I get a ride across the river? I'm too small to swim across. Ha, nice try, Slick. If I gave you a ride, you'd just sting me. Uh, no, if I did that, we'd both drown. It would be a lose-lose. Yeah, right, I'll help you out. I've been acting like a huge jerk lately, all to make this one sandwich. But I'm gonna change starting now. For once, I'm gonna be helpful. So the fox gives the scorpion a ride, when all of a sudden... Ah, why'd you sting me? Because I'm a scorpion. It's in my nature. Yeah, but you're a talking scorpion. I thought you'd have enough cognitive sense to know not to do that. You even said yourself that if you stung me, we'd both die. Actually, I can hold my breath for six days. What? Yeah, watch. <gasps> my sandwich. And then the fox died. He had no family, no friends, and no sandwich. And that's why you never help scorpions. to you guys. I pranked you. This fable wasn't the fox and the scorpion. It's actually the frog and the scorpion. The fox never got stung. He knows better than to help out another creature. Fox is too busy looking out for number one, baby. The frog's dead though. And if it makes you happy, the scorpion died too. And the fox got to enjoy his sandwich. Still alone, but the end. Man, what a plot twist. Aren't I so good at telling stories? So what did we learn, children? We learned, don't ask for help. Don't help out others. Lie to people, take what you want, and you'll succeed.